Hey everyone, in this video, we'll cover all that you need to know about importing and exporting CSVs in Vela. As you can see in the video, we've broken it down into four distinct chapters. We'll cover how to create an export file and have that sent directly to your email. We'll then look at the CSV itself and how to effectively format and update and enter the data needed to be able to then prepare for importing the CSV. When you're ready to import, we'll cover how to import the CSV itself and work with the mapping wizard to align the attributes as needed for publication. And then once the file has been imported, we'll take a look at the publication process and how to use the CSV to both create new listings as well as update existing listings. To start, let's take a look at how to create the CSV export file. So when you're in the main listing page of Ella, if you have multiple shops connected, first just select the shop that you'd like to create the file for. Then you can use the sidebar filters, select all, current page. However, you would like to identify the listings to include in the export, there is no limit. So once you have then selected the listings, simply click export. You'll see a confirmation here to specify the email address it'll be sent to. Simply click export. You'll see a confirmation. The time it takes will depend on the number of listings included in the CSV, but in general, it'll be very quick, just a matter of minutes. When you go to your inbox, you'll see this in the subject line. This is what to look for, and then simply click download, and that'll trigger the download of the CSV to your desktop, documents file, wherever it is that you have your downloads saved. Once you've downloaded the CSV, you can then open it in Excel, Google Sheets, Apple Numbers, whichever tool you typically use for managing CSVs and spreadsheets. When you open it, this is what you'll see. I'll highlight some key components within the Etsy spreadsheet, but the same logic applies to Shopify. In the first column, you'll notice the listing ID. This is the ID that is assigned to each product directly from Etsy and Shopify. So this is what you'll be able to use as, a, as an identifier that if you then come into the CSV and you make updates, but then you want to import that CSV back in to Vela in order to make updates to the original listings, they'll be identified by the listing ID. So you really don't need to in any way touch that. It'll be maintained and assigned to the matching listing. If you want to create new listings via CSV, then you won't need to have a listing ID at all. So you can see some of these will be blank. Everything else will be pretty clear and recognized. You'll see in the top row, all of the similar attributes that you will know exist on Etsy or Shopify if you're looking at the Shopify CSV. I'll highlight just a couple points to keep in mind. For tags, for example, you can add multiple tags, you'll separate those by column, same with materials. Category, same thing, you'll just want to separate multi, multiple categories by comma. Within dealing with inventory and variations, pricing, everything there, a couple things to highlight. You'll notice that in this top row, you've got price, quantity, and SKU at the product level. So if you don't have variations, then your price, quantity, and SKU will go here. If you do have variations, you can see then how this is managed. So you'll have the first variation, which will be repeated multiple times, but then the options within that variation. If you have two variations, same thing. If you're using individual pricing, quantity, or SKU, then the pricing, quantity, or SKU would go here and would not exist at the product level. So you can see that in this case, I've got, so for this, this is all one listing. You'll have pricing here, but you won't then have pricing at the product level. You'll notice that the way to tell when a new listing starts is basically the new row. If it contains variations, then the variation information will populate the rows in between but it'll all be tied to that primary listing. Final thing is just when you're looking at then photos, video, digital file, any of the media assets. If you export, you'll get the link directly in the export, but 
if you're then creating new listings or want to update any of the media assets, you can include the link directly in the CSD. However, it's important to know that that link needs to be a direct download link from, you can use Google Drive, Dropbox, another source in which you store that information, but it has to be the direct download link. It can't be just a web preview link. So as you play around, this will all make sense. You'll see all of the data pulled directly from whatever file you exported. You can then make whatever updates you would like directly in the CSV and then use it to both update existing listings or to create completely new listings, which we'll cover in the publication chapter. Once you have your CSVs ready to import, you can come to Bella and on the main listings page, you'll see the import button in the top right hand corner. Simply click it and at that point, simply select the CSV that you intend to import. You'll see that when you do this, the first thing you'll come to is the mapping wizard. The left hand column here is going to pull the columns directly from the CSV. We suggest that you definitely use the Vela template and that will then allow the mapping rules to work automatically. So listing ID will map to listing ID, title, title, etc. If you use a CSV from a different source that may use different labels in the columns, that's completely fine. But then you'll simply have to use the mapping wizard to align the right column with the right attribute in Vela. So for example, if you were to use a CSV that called the title column product name instead of title, you would come in and simply have to select title. If you use the Vela template, then everything will be mapped automatically. When you've gone through and you've done the mapping, you can also just as a check, look at the preview attribute here to see what's being pulled from the CSV. One of the things that we've implemented that is really uh, a, a nice additional attribute and aspect here for people that have multiple shops is you can use a single CSV to import and be used to create new listings across multiple shops at once. So in this case, if you did have an Etsy shop and a Shopify shop or multiple Etsy shops, then you could use that same CSV and have it be imported to both channels. You can see here that in the case of Shopify, since I'm using what started out as an Etsy CSV, certain attributes, for example, who made it, what is it, will show up as choose attribute. And those can just be left in this state because there isn't anything to map them to, or you could choose do not import. Either way, they're just gonna basically be ignored on the import. So once you have all the mapping rules set up and everything looks as you would like, then simply click import listings. You'll see the indication here as they are processing. The time it takes will depend on the number of listings and variations within the CSV. However, while this is running, you can work within other sections. You can close the app entirely, sign out. It will continue processing. As the import then begins to process or the listings themselves are being imported, you'll see the indicator here that'll provide the reference to how much more time is available. When the CSV has completed importing, here's what you'll see in the imported section in Bella. The listings will be divided between complete and incomplete. Those that contained errors within the CSV or missing information that will then need to be fixed in order to be able to publish will be marked in complete in red. Those that are ready to publish as they are, you'll see complete in green. On those that are marked incomplete, for example, you would be able to use then bulk editing to make any of the adjustments needed. You can see what the errors are individually and take care of those as well. Up top, you'll see that the imported listings are separated between existing listings and new listings. Existing listings are those that hid within the CSV contain a listing ID that matches to one of your existing listings in the shop. And if you then publish, as you'll see here, you can choose to create, use those to create new listings or update the existing listings. 
for new listings, those are ones that within the CSV had no listing ID at all. And so the only option for those will be to publish them as new. So when you click then, you select the listings that you would like to publish and click publish. You'll see here, there's the option to update the existing listings or to publish as either new active listings or draft listings. Once you click your option, you'll see then the process start for publication. And when it completes, you'll see then those changes reflected in Etsy or Shopify directly. And those listings will then be removed from imported and placed in the appropriate status.